Tell me about when you and Nat were in the studio. Were you? I read that you were coaching Mike on. He was asking like how to hit certain like so, melodies. You have to go back from it being it starts here in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. third in Calville uh, at Such a Jazz. Myself and Andre Harris, we wrote that record together. Yeah, I already had that demo. When I was 16 years old, I had a crush on a boy that worked at McDonald's in Camberwell. Like, this is the old school McDonald's with the brown uniform, creased pants, like, he was fine. He swept the floor, he didn't really flip burgers like that. Not yet, I think he got promoted, who knows. He was just fine. So, <laughs> I wrote that song about him. And then years later, I would get to Philadelphia and hear Jill Scott's first album. And there were two songs in particular, The Way, and Long Walk, and I was like, who produced those two records? Turns out it's Andre Harris. Now you have to understand, in the same week that Floetic, the album is being created at that time, Dre and myself were doing late nights in the studio, and we ended up recording Say Yes, which was a demo that I wrote for Ron Isley, specifically, but he didn't take it. Wow. Same week, we go back in on the late night, we're recording Butterflies, but I don't know who we're recording that for. I just knew I had this song and I thought it was dope. Let's just do it. So the demo that we had for Floetic gets to the hands of John McClain, who was Michael Jackson's personal manager at the time. And then Michael hears it. Wait, Mike hears it. I can call him Mike, okay? Mike hears it, calls the studio and says he wants to work with those girls because he's heard this Floetic demo. I want to work with the girls that wrote that record. So Jazzy Jeff is like, you're never gonna guess who <laughs> called the studio. So I think it's a joke, like, Dre Harris is a prankster. So I'm thinking he's calling the studio pretending to be Mike. Okay, um, this is Michael. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Michael Jackson doesn't call you, like, weeks into you just landing in Philly and doing this stuff. This doesn't happen to anybody. But it did, so by the time we get the demo to John McClain, we are signed by December of 2000. I'm in the studio with Michael Jackson by March of 2001. And I'm telling Michael Jackson what to do every day for two weeks straight. He is there two hours before I even get to the studio, warming up the vocals, making sure that he's on point, making sure I have enough rest so when I'm ready to go in, he's like, no, get the talk back, you tell me what to do. And I'll, I'll never forget sitting behind the board, Bruce Media, and God rest his soul, Mike's engineer, since off the wall, thriller, all the things he looks like, Santa Claus, that guy. Dre is sitting right there, and Mike's behind the glass, and the music, the first chord, boom, and Mike just says, butterflies. A tear protruded from this eye and flew out. I'm sitting there just. Yeah. Woo! No, the whole tear, it was like a cartoon tear. Like, I was like, pull it together. So Bruce is just like rubbing my back, like, I get it, it's okay, this is a moment. So after those tears kind of just escaped, I'm like, all right, let's get it together. And there was, oh, you got, all right, one more time, Mike, give me that. Oh, all right. <clears throat> One more time. All you got to do is, all right, give me that breath. One more time, Mike. It's just, and I'm coaching. From then, I was Phil Jackson and Mike Jordan type <laughs> shit. It was, <laughs> we were there with it. So Mike's like, okay, okay. Lunchtime, let's have a break. Paris and Prince, when they were really young, running in the studio, we would order soul food. It was smothered turkey chops. Um, mac and cheese, colored greens, cornbread, every day. Wow. Like, Philly, you made me 280 pounds, <laughs> okay? <laughs> happily, happily, Mike put 20 of those pounds back on when I, when I got out there. We was eating. Wow. We was eating good. And um, it was, uh, I got to see a side of Mike that no one saw. Yeah. Like, human Mike, yeah. daddy Mike chill the fuck out Mike. And um, spending that time with him in New York, he called one day and said, Marge, I'm not gonna make it to uh, 
the studio today. So I'm like, you don't have to come ever. I don't like, I don't mean, what, no, I don't care what you do. But it, his reason was because he uh, he was being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that year. So I'm like, Mike, go ahead, like, go be on it. You'll be back go tomorrow. Be time. It was like, yo, just make sure you get those harmonies together because you get a horn section and, ex you know, accentuate. Well, I'm like, Mike, I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> whatever you say. So he comes back. We get back at it. And um, I remember telling him that, you know, the crush I had on him during Thriller when he turned into a werewolf was not normal. <laughs> <laughs> but it still stands, and I swear, Mike, you could get it. Like, told him, dead ass to his face. I, I didn't care. So yeah. no, we had, we were having that type of fun. Like it was, it was, it was chill. I got to chill with Mike, and we we mixed the song in a uh, LA and um, had fun there. And he was supposed to be on Far Away. Oh, I thought it was a wonderful wow. step. I wanted to stay. I wrote for him, and he had that demo. I wanted that entire song for him, but Mike was supposed to do verse two or far away. Wow. Two things. <laughs> supposed to be that. Wow. So every time I hear verse two, even in my iTunes, it still says far away featuring Michael Jackson. I haven't changed it in my playlist. So everyone has a far away, but I have far away featuring Michael Jackson. Still. R.I.P. Mike. Yeah, because when Ooh, I was yeah. listening to I Want You to Stay, you did a little human nature vibes on that. Oh, yeah. so I, I, I thought that was you paying homage to Mike. I Absolutely. Think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, wow. Yeah. Can um, I ask you this? There's like four different versions of Butterfly, the demo, mm -hmm. you did your remix on the album, the original with Mike, and then the remix with Eve. Mm -hmm. Which one's your favorite one? Mike. Mm. Mike. Mm. Mike will tell you mine, I'm going to yeah. tell you his. I love that. Mike will absolutely tell you mine. I love that. I'll say Mike because it's so unrealistic. Because it all feels like a dream until I can press play and I can hear how pristine that piece of work is. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that song. Nothing. I love it.